Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our webinar today. We're really happy to see you here. My name is Lentil Evergreen and I'm a dental application engineer here at Shining 3D. I primarily work from our Tampa, Florida office in the United States and I'll be presenting part of our webinar today. So during this webinar, we'll be going over uh, some of the nuts and bolts as well as the newest features of our dental scan software, which is compatible with all of our uh, desktop scanners uh, that are branded by Shining 3D. During the presentation, please feel free to send any questions you may have into the chat and my colleagues will do their very best to get back to you. And at the end of the presentation, we're going to have around a 15 minute block where we'll go ahead and answer some of those overhanging questions. But in the meantime, feel free to post anything that you may be thinking about in the chat. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, as you may be familiar with, we have uh, a variety of desktop scanners uh, that Shiny3D has put onto the market. And each of these scanners has various features that uh, have their own advantages. So this may relate to accuracy, it may relate to speed of scanning, the texture that's initialized with either white light or blue light, color or black and white scans. And what you will find is that the dental scan software, particularly with this new update, is going to help highlight each of those uh, features that the desktop scanners have to really enhance them and bring the best out of them. So of the new features, I'm just going to quickly go over uh, some of the most noticeable ones. We have a complete overhaul of the user interface. So it's gotten a complete makeover. It looks completely different and is much more clean and streamlined. We have a more flexible workflow going on. We also have the ability to connect cases to our Shining 3D Dental Cloud and have those cases stored there. And we have uh, the user controlled export format for each of the files, which helps save on hard drive space. Uh, as well, we have the background data processing, which should once again uh, speed up the processes of the scanning phase. We have a texture scan available for all workflows instead of just one or two now. And we also have uh, additional scan modes and functions that have just been added that I'll go over. Uh, as well, you can import local data in case you have a previous scan that's been done and those automatic software updates that you can opt into as well to keep everything up to date and running smoothly. So as far as the new user interface, you may remember with the uh, older version, it was uh, a little bit more uh, simplified in that it had uh, primarily the, the white and blue coloration uh, without as much color coding and as much um, organization of all the features. But what our wonderful team has done is they've gone ahead and given a completely new facelift to the interface. So now all these features are organized, easy to find, and it allows you to get the absolute most out of your scanning, documenting everything along the way, making sure you're getting all the nooks and crannies of those details. So what we have also made sure to emphasize and prioritize in this update of the user interface is that it is easy and streamlined to navigate for both the individual and the team. So whether or not the person using the software is very experienced or not with technology and software of this kind, the interface is meant to be easily navigatable and can be learned pretty quickly. As well, we understand that labs and other teams may have several members that are going to be using the same software and dealing with shared cases. So we've tried to make it to where everything is well organized for that team so that you can uh, document who is scanning and uh, which patient is being scanned the data for. And you can document uh, everything into various fields and features. And once again, it's pretty easy to navigate everything. It's, it's pretty intuitive. So regardless of what the experience is uh, among team members, uh, anyone could be able to pick up the software pretty quickly. as well uh, when it comes to the flexible workflow. So we've made it possible to uh, not only make the workflow simple and faster, but also you're able to customize it uh, according to one's preferences. So you can have certain features already preset, you can have certain default scan scanning modes um, already set, so that it just saves you that additional amount of time when going to scan. 
And what we've gone ahead and prioritized by doing this is the efficiency and speed of scanning. So if you're going through um, even 100 or more cases a day, it will just help everything speed up and go without a hitch. So you just don't have to spend that extra time fighting with the software and you can instead just focus on the cases, which at the end of the day is what we want to prioritize the accuracy and performance of. And as far as the dental cloud, this is uh, a beautifully designed uh, cloud that allows one to save any order data in, onto a uh, server that can be accessed anywhere with an internet connection so long as it's, com it's a compatible device like a computer. So this allows you to uh, access the data uh, uh, you know, among team members so it doesn't have to be uh, saved to just a single hard drive where it's limited to one computer or where only one person can log into it because they have the credentials. Uh, and this cloud also allows you to communicate back and forth with clinics and labs, other labs. It allows you to send messages, files, and it even allows you to uh, see analytics and statistics on the cases that have been exchanged. You can see the uh, order status of the cases. You can see previews and different file format exports of the cases. It basically covers anything you could ever want or need from exchanging that information. Another thing that I would like to emphasize is that this cloud works as a well-designed communication mode for uh, labs and clinics to go back and forth on, exchange files, exchange words, so that these cases come out uh, both as efficiently and as high quality as possible, instead of having to go back and forth with shipping products because something needs to be remade, because it, something wasn't conveyed uh, very clearly. What we've tried to do with this cloud is make that all um, all in one platform so that all that communication can happen before any products are shipped out and before any time has to be wasted, basically. And now I'd just like to go over a couple more of our functions. Some of these are carried over from the previous versions and some of these are new. So uh, firstly, the uh, swap jaw data uh, function just allows you to swap the upper jaw and the lower jaw scans that may have been taken, just in case you might have uh, put on the, uh, the incorrect jaw when on a certain phase. So if you place the lower jaw on the scanner when you're in the upper jaw section of the scanning and then you do vice versa, you can use this tool to swap those two instead of having to go back and rescan. As well, the uh, import model setting is very similar to the import uh, local data section that we talked about, where you can uh, import previously scanned uh, data to overwrite what might already be there in the case. As well, the multipath scanning uh, allows you to just get that additional accuracy uh, and information when it comes to scanning and allows you to just uh, scan the uh, the the model or uh, the data from, from multiple angles. So the high quality scan uh, also allows you to add details and just a higher quality uh, image and, and, um, and data to the scan. So this is in case, say there are some holes or some areas that might not have captured quite right on the very first time around, or if it's a particularly important area that you want to have uh, the highest quality possible, uh, this can help with that. Note that just higher quality scans are going to have, there are going to be larger file sizes, so it's generally going to take up more space when using that, but there's a way to balance it to where it's worth it. The AI scan feature allows you to uh, sort of uh, capture those areas that might not have been uh, scanned quite to your liking, but it will use AI to determine which of those areas they are instead of having to manually select what those areas are. The texture scan uh, feature will allow you to uh, uh, help process that, uh, that color texture feature of it. Um, say if you're working with something black and white or color, it will just allow you to um, process that. The abutment scan uh, allows you to uh, use the multipath scanning feature to uh, scan abutments which are considered a different object that has a different algorithm to it when it uh, as compared to say an entire dental model just because they tend to be the abutments tend to be a little bit thinner and smaller so the al algorithm is adjusted for that 
the high dynamic region uh, scan will improve the uh, integrity of the scanned area and it helps uh, collect that uh, data that might not be as commonly captured, says, such as the gingival area, or say if you want to capture part of the articulator, then you can use this feature to um, help with that. And similarly to uh, the abutment scan, there's a different mechanism used with the unsectioned dye scan, and that just allows you to improve the accuracy of those non-sectioned dye areas, since it's just it's a different design than what the rest of the model might be. The reduced high brightness scan or the like metal tooth scan or metal object scan uh, will help to scan those areas that might be especially reflective. So this might be in the case of an abutment rod, for example, that's made of metal. When the scanner shines light onto it, the reflection from that metal might uh, disrupt what uh, can normally be captured well. So this feature allows the scanner to readjust for that reflection and capture that uh, metallic area more accurately. Some additional features to go over uh, include the calibration reminder, which you can see in this image here. Uh, in that upper right corner of the software, it's going to show a timer of how many days it's been since the scanner was last calibrated. Generally, one would want the scanner to be calibrated about every 15 days, or after the scanner's been um, transported on a, say, a rocky uh, drive, if it's been driven across the state or across the country, you may need to re recalibrate it. Or if you are finding some odd errors in the scan, then recalibration can often fix these things. But at least for every one of those 15-day intervals, the software is going to help remind you with that by changing this uh, calibration counter from green to red once you pass those 15 days. And as far as the um, optimal scan settings, so uh, this just once again helps to uh, improve the workflow and get the highest quality scan out of the, uh, the software. The add scan function also allows you to flip an object or rotate an object so that you can get some of those blind spots that might not be captured in that initial, initial positioning of the object. The wax up inner scan also is uh, a new feature that just allows you to scan more dental products than before, such as um, these wax ups. Now, another important aspect to go over is that uh, in order to operate this software consistently and successfully, it's very important that the computer and the environment that's being used to operate the software is um, of minimum requirements or higher. So I'm just going to go over a couple of these and then I'm going to take you um, to uh, some other details about that on our website. The QR code you see on the screen is going to take you directly to that web page on the Shining 3D website, which is where you can always source this information from. So uh, as far as the version 3009 of Dental Scan, I'm just going to go over um, some of the main requirements we have. For the operating system, we only have the software compatible with Windows OS, so using iOS with a Macintosh computer uh, generally is not going to work out. And the Windows OS needs to be uh, Windows 10 Pro, which is the 64-bit, or Windows 11. And as far as the RAM, we want at least uh, 16 gigabytes. Uh, and for the DS Mix scanner and the uh, newest uh, DS EX uh, Pro H scanner, you are going to want 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and just go, to go into more detail about that, I have that written there. Uh, the, as far as the CPU, which is just going to be the general graphics card that will uh, come with the computer and is meant for those background processes, uh, an Intel brand core um, i7-8700 um, processor for the CPU is going to be required. So non-Intel uh, CPUs uh, just cannot be guaranteed to work very well with the software, just according to what our R&D team has done testing on. The GPU, which is going to be the graphics driver that's going to be, or the, the graphics card, which is going to be responsible for processing those more demanding uh, graphics-heavy processes, uh, more so than what the CPU would do. For the GPU, we would require an NVIDIA brand uh, GTX 1060 or above, so it has to be an NVIDIA card. We cannot guarantee proper operation with a non-NVIDIA card, 
and a GTX series or an RTX series tends to work great. Uh, please just make sure it's at least that 1060. Um, a 1050, for example, may have some bugs with it. Uh, but if you have uh, you know, a 1060 or a 2060 or a 3060, you should be completely fine. And you'll want at least the six gigabytes of RAM for that GPU specifically as well. As for the USB ports that are going to be included with your computer or your laptop, you're going to want to have at least one USB 3.0 port. USB 3.0 is one of the newer generations of USB. It's easily recognizable by having a little blue bar on the port. And this is going to ensure higher fidelity and accuracy uh, with whatever is plugged into that USB port. That USB 3.0 port should be used for the scanner cable specifically, the USB uh, cord that connects the scanner to your computer um, should be connected to that USB 3.0 port. You'll want at least one additional USB port. It does not have to necessarily be a USB 3.0, but that uh, port will be used for the dongle, which is how the software is uh, verified as far as licensing goes. And as far as the um, hard drive space for your computer, you're going to want to make sure that you have at least uh, two gigabytes of additional storage available in the location where you download the actual software. Um, so that would be the exe file, the installer file. This would generally be in your Shining 3D folder on your C drive. And you'll want at least an additional two gigabytes uh, available once that's installed. For the dental order folder location, uh, you'll want to have at least uh, 20 gigabytes available. And both of these metrics are pretty easy to achieve on most C drives, uh, especially today. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue, but over time you may need to go back and look through your C drive um, and make sure that you're clearing away those old files that you may not need or any additional programs that you're not using anymore, just to make sure there's enough space for the scanner software to work properly. If you don't have enough space on the hard drive, the software will give you a message saying that it can't proceed without that space being freed up. And as far as the uh, power input, uh, you'll just want to make sure you have uh, 100 to 240 volts um, or 1.5 amp, uh, 50 to 60 hertz, and these can be checked on the power brick of uh, the um, scanner, scanner um, power cord as well if you ever need to reference this. An internet connection is required both to transfer cases and to get updates. Uh, for the software, and you'll want the, the, the internet connection to be at least, at least average in terms of speed. Uh, you can operate the software on a slower internet speed, but you may encounter some problems with transferring cases, updates, and whatnot. So we would recommend a average or fast internet connection if possible. Ethernet connection tends to work much better than Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi bandwidth tends to get overloaded, especially if you're working in a lab setting with multiple computers or a clinical setting with multiple computers. So uh, a, a um, Ethernet connection is just going to allow for uh, both a faster connection and uh, generally it's not going to be crowded out as much by other systems. And so now I'm just going to take you to our website really quickly um, about this. So on the Shining 3D website, which is shining3ddental.com, we have tons of resources, both as far as our newest products and about the company. We also have uh, as our support center, which is a very valuable resource. Specifically um, under the support center, I would recommend um, bookmarking this page just for your reference. And uh, you can access our knowledge base for common solutions uh, to um, issues with our various uh, products. And as well, the Download Center allows you to access the newest version of our dental softwares. So for example, if I wanted to navigate to the newest version of uh, Dental Scan and see the release notes, this is where I would go. And so on this page for Download the Dental Scan, uh, you're going to see the release notes from the newest version as well as links to where you can download this. Uh, so here is a list of some of the things we're going over. For example, if you ever wanted to see what's added between versions. And once again, we have this link to the required uh, PC specs and environment specs when it comes to operating the uh, software. So this is always here for your reference.
Oh, and another small note I should go to is uh, the environmental requirements. So the setting that you may be using the scanner in uh, just needs to be maintained uh, at a certain temperature, so between 10 and 30 degrees Celsius, which is pretty reasonable and keeping the scanner away from um, overly bright light, which may interfere with its actual light scanning of the products. Um, and as well, uh, making sure the scanner is on a flat and steady surface, uh, so it should be leveled uh, at all times so that calibration and scanning can go, um, can go smoothly. So of similar relevance as far as downloading and installing the software, Another important step is to have your computer and your system configured properly so that you don't encounter any errors during the download, installation, or operation process. So once again, it's pretty important that the uh, computer or laptop that you're using uh, meets those minimum requirements that we just went over. It's worth noting that having a laptop instead of a desktop can be pretty convenient if the team that's using the computer tends to travel to shows or conferences pretty often because then they can take their laptop with them instead of having to leave it behind. If it's a lab that's maybe a little more stationary, then they can go for a desktop just fine. So once you make sure that laptop or computer um, desktop meets those requirements, you also want to make sure that the Windows Defender firewall is disabled so that the uh, Shining 3D dental scan uh, software is not blocked when you go to download it. You'll also want to make sure that the antivirus programs that might be on the computer are uninstalled. So these would be programs like McAfee or Norton. These do tend to also um, interfere with uh, downloading and installing the software properly. Uh, as well, you'll want to make sure that all of the Windows software updates um, have been installed. So make sure that it's at Windows 10 or Windows 11 and also make sure that any additional updates that go along with that have been installed. If it gets too far out of date, then operation of the software may be faulty. And the graphics uh, card, the GPU, has its own drivers that should be kept up to date. And this uh, can be found from NVIDIA's own website, where you can simply select your type of graphics card and then download those drivers and install them. And as well, You'll want to make sure that you download the software 7-zip in order to unpack any uh, Shining 3D software that you download. When you download the software, it's initially going to be in a zipped folder uh, to save on hard drive space and to make sure that it downloads um, as quickly as possible. 7-zip is the software we recommend for unpacking it since uh, the Windows Unpacker software and WinRAR, for example, sometimes don't unpack it quite right. So 7-Zip, which is a free software that installs pretty quickly, is one that you, um, that you would be recommended to use. So once you've unpacked the downloaded software packet uh, using 7-Zip, you'll want to run the EXE program uh, as an administrator. And from there, uh, your software will be installed, and you'll just want to make sure that you recalibrate the scanner uh, once you're booting it up for the first time, and test it all out to make sure it's working. And if there's ever any issues, then we would want the user to check back with their reseller to uh, make sure that everything's been configured correctly and that it meets the minimum requirements. And if there's issues from there, the reseller can always uh, contact the Shiny 3D's um, after sales support team and we can help out with that. And as well, if you're interested in keeping up to date and getting even more resources from Shining 3D, we do have a presence on several social media platforms. So that includes Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Our handle is Shining3D Dental. I've also included a QR code to our Shining3Dental.com uh, website, which I just showed you, and that's going to um, this can be something that you may want to bookmark for your future reference. We'll always have uh, tons of uh, information about our products on there, about our team and our company, uh, as well as about the um, the solutions and the resources that we just went over. We also have a bit of contact information here uh, for our various headquarters. And one additional thing that I'd like to point out is that we have a Shining 3D YouTube channel as well that you may be interested in seeing. We're going to be posting there all the time um, and we'll have uh, several resources there about uh, operating our dental solutions and our dental software. So if you ever have a question about how to operate something or if you want some uh, marketing material on this, this is a great resource. So. Uh, Shining 3D Scanner is going to be our handle for our YouTube page. 
And with that, I'd also just like to pop into our dental cloud really quickly uh, to show you what it would look like when you open it up. So on the dashboard, once again, you're going to have uh, some statistics and overview of cases that have been sent and received. Uh, you'll see your various connections there as well. You'll see the type of orders that have been received, uh, the type of distributors and doctors that uh, are sending cases. You can filter by uh, the type of case as well. In the cases section, you'll just see the whole list of cases that you've received um, as a lab, and it will show you um, the connections that you may have, uh, the members of your team, which you can add multiple of. Uh, there's some device management settings here, and as far as the institution settings, this is uh, a valuable pa page for um, setting the various formats that you may wish to receive your files in. So if uh, a lab always wants to receive uh, STL files, then they can simply enter STL into this field, and when they receive a case, it will automatically be copied into STL format for them to download. You can also uh, change some review settings for the cases, and um, you can also submit uh, a service ticket to Shining 3D's uh, after sale support if there's an issue uh, that can't be resolved by the reseller. And as an example of what it looks like when you open a case, so when you first uh, look at it, it's going to uh, load the previews for the JAWS, and it will um, allow you to accept the order, reject the order, save the order, um, place some notes on it, and you can also see some details about uh, the case that have been added um, from the, um, the sender. You can send messages to the sender and have that back and forth communication, including uploading various files. You can download the various formats here. So I had several formats uh, selected for this, so I have several formats that I can download, in addition to just the um, the original uh, zip file that's at the top that's going to include that default um, configuration. It's going to show some processing information that might have been added, um, as well as delivery information once you get to that step. You can see the preview of the jaw, uh, if that's what's been sent, any, any scan data that's been sent um, can be previewed. Uh, you, can, you can screenshot it, you uh, can view it in full screen, and uh, this is just very helpful if you want to get an overview of what you're seeing with the case. And as far as the interface of our software itself, so this is the overhaul um, that we were talking about. And I'll just go into um, a couple of quick settings uh, here as well. So in uh, the user tab, this is where uh, you'll see the um, current login information for the user. As well, on the connections tab, this is where you can add um, another account that's registered with the Shining 3D uh, Dental Cloud and have them as a connection to send and receive cases from. So. Uh, once they're registered, you can simply type in the name that they're organized under. So if I wanted to um, add a lab, then I could simply uh, type it in like so and add it from there. And then uh, I would be able to send the request and the lab or clinic could then uh, accept the request um, or reject it. Uh, as well, the main settings are going to include uh, language settings as well as some default scan settings. So if you primarily are going to be scanning restoration or orthodontics, you can select it here as what's going to be automatically selected as the scanning mode. So you just have to, um, you're able to skip that additional click during each um, scanning phase. You can select the numbering system and the default save path. We do recommend saving to the C drive. Um, you're going to have an, uh, a dental order uh, folder that's automatically generated when the software is installed. Uh, you can create uh, links to your uh, ExoCAD application if you want to have um, the two linked. You can also um, change up the naming rule for the files. So if you want the cases to be organized in a certain way to where it's easy for you to find them uh, in your cloud or in your hard drive, then you can use these various uh, fields to choose what it's going to be. And the order in which you uh, check these boxes is going to be the order in which uh, the, um, the features are going to appear in the file name. So order ID, um, let's say creation date, and patient name. 
So it's going to open up in that order. Uh, it's going to generate in that order, and that way you can easily find your cases per your needs. Um, scan settings, just a, a little bit of a customization that you're able to tweak. And then the about page on, on here is going to show you the uh, features of your scanner. So you'll have the serial code there. You'll be able to see the status of your license and um, the, even the number of the dongle. And here you can check for updates uh, manually. And you can also have the automatic updates feature checked here as well. There's also going to be a way to um, show the log of the software. So if there's ever any issues with your software and you need to communicate with our uh, after sales support team, then um, this, this log feature may be helpful in just showing us the series of events that's happened with the software that may have led up to um, any issues. You can also select the device type that you're using uh, from this menu, just to make sure that everything is configured correctly. Another valuable resource is that in this little question mark, uh, you'll be able to bring up a copy of the user manual. And the, mu the user manual is going to take you over not only some of the uh, safety features and uh, the more dry parts of uh, the scanner, but also scanning techniques and it can really help out with anything that you may get stuck on. You can search uh, through the manual if you so wish, um, and you can also just walk through the entire process and it will tell you um, all the various steps that you may need. So even for somebody who's new to this software, uh, the manual itself is going to provide a lot of uh, resources on that, uh, with included pictures and links and everything to uh, whatever you may need. So these uh, various features that I was going over, these are all listed here. And even for specialized cases, there is going to be various operation tips on how to do it. It's going to go over um, various parts of the software, including the pre-design settings. Um, let's say that you're going to be um, creating uh, a printed model in AccuDesign. It, the manual is even going to go over that as well. So with that said, I want to thank you all for coming to this webinar today. Uh, your time is very valuable, so we're, we really appreciate you coming here. Uh, and giving us your time. So I hope, I hope that you've enjoyed it and we're more than happy here to help uh, with anything else that uh, you may have questions with. So uh, we're going to go ahead and transition into that live Q&A uh, to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you again.